From the border with Argentina, it's a gentle 20 minute warm up down to the first entry rapid in Gelves Canyon. It starts off with a cheeky class 3 to 4 rapid that can sometimes decide your rhythm for the day, leading you into a short steep canyon not too unlike Infierno Canyon which lies just downstream. The exit rapid can be deceiving, so stay on your toes here. A further 20 minutes of flat, fast moving water brings us to Infierno Canyon. This back here, this is the so-called gate of Inferno. It is the starting point of probably the most intense section of white water on this river. And um, just around the corner is the first rapid called Entrada. And this is what I was just talking about. This here is the first rapid of the Inferno Canyon. It is called Entrada. And um, we try and sneak down the left here and then pretty much straight down the middle heading to the right towards the bottom to avoid the nastiness against the wall there. What follows is more of the same. Powerful, continuous, Futulefu white water. The steep canyon walls compress the water, causing boily and pushy rapids. This, combined with the inaccessibility of the canyon, makes for a serious class five descent. This here is wall shut. Um, it is not one of the hardest rapids, but there is quite a big hole here to look out for. So usually we try and come down a little bit on the lift, try to make a move to the right here, punch a diagonal straight down the middle, and then try and stay on the right side here to avoid these big roll pools on the left side. Just when we thought Infierno Canyon was as exciting as things could get, a landslide from river left created a new Class 5 rapid, now known as Dynamite. Uh, it looks really big and intimidating. I hope it goes well. Duamente. <laughs> 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 oh boy. <laughs> This here behind me, this is the new rapid that has been created by the town. This uh, construction work up there, big slide came into the river and um, it's one of the biggest ones on the whole section. Uh, we call it dynamite. Get my boat all the way to the river left bank, kind of float in off river left bank, looking for the weak spot in that first big seam there. So I'll be driving from left to right, looking for the weak spot, finishing the Big Eddy River right. This is a good marker here, this diagonal. Try to be about right here, and then head to the right as hard as you can. The idea is to be low enough that you don't get pushed back to the left side by this big wave here. Miss that, but have enough speed to avoid this big hole at the bottom. Due to the power of the rapid through the Inferno section, most paddlers tend to swap their playboats for bigger, faster river running boats. This here, this is exit, last rapid in Inferno.
The line starts left of center with the intention to bust right after the first big feature. After the intense continuous white water through Inferno Canyon, there is a scenic 20 minute float which brings us down to two of the biggest rapids on the Futulefu. There are some other recreational activities to indulge in. Good fishing here, Casey. Very good fishing. Very exciting. The first of these two rapids is Zeta, where the river bends 90 degrees and compresses through a narrow gap no wider than 10 meters. The smooth polished rock is also home to a labyrinth of potholes and undercuts with rock formations like Swiss cheese. The standard line here is to portage on river right, which can be great fun as the re-entry is a perfect seal launch. At lower flows, the line through Zeta opens up, although she still remains a rather sketchy rapid at the best of times. Whilst in Zeta, the pleasure of running down the middle overrides the consequences. It's just a little ways downstream that we come across the throne room an awesome class 5 rapid that has it all. Most rapids look deceivingly small when scouted from above and this stands especially true for the throne room. It's not until you are dropping into the top part that you fully realize just how steep this rapid really is. The line through throne room varies a little bit with different water levels, but most of the time it goes something like this. Start right of center, far enough right to miss the first diagonal hole that comes from the left. Then after the second diagonal, put some power strokes in to move left, keeping your angle and using the pillow wave that breaks off the throne rock to surf you hard left and hopefully sneaking left of the big hole at the bottom. The problem here is usually that either you don't have the nerve to wait for the first move and the diagonal wave smashes you back to the right. Or a more likely scenario is that everything happens so fast you just lose your bearings and the mighty throne takes control of the chaos. In order 
to avoid the diagonal that comes in from the left side, you have to go a little bit to the right to get a bit of speed. And um, that all went well, and you just hit that cushion with about 50 miles an hour, and then uh, lost control. After the excitement in throne room, the river spills out into a massive pool before splitting into two channels which indicates the start of the wild mile section. The popular line here is down this left hand channel, dropping blindly over a smooth horizon line and enjoying the bouncy waves below. Around the next corner, the wild mile continues into a rapid called chaos, reminding us that we're still in the thick of things. At high flows, this wild mile section becomes super pushy and continuous, bringing us down to the confluence with the Rio Azul. This is the start of the Terminator section, and we have now covered approximately half of the Futalafu's whitewater. 